tonight going to continue with Acts chapter 9, talking about the conversion of Saul now. And there's quite a bit here. <clears throat> so let's get into that. Acts chapter 9 verse 1, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem, unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth. And when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. He was blinded, and he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth, and hath seen a vision, hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to blind all that call on thy name, to bind, I'm sorry, to bind all that call on thy name, put them in chains. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles, the kings, and the children of Israel, or in kings. And I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way, and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from him, from his eyes, as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose, and was baptized. So, um, pretty crazy story, huh? I guess when Saul, as soon as Saul see, saw the Lord, you know, he uh, repented and um, he did what the Lord told him to do. And he was blinded. And why was he blinded? You know, was it to humble Paul? Um, then we see another obedient uh, believer, Ananias. And Ananias had reservations about doing anything with, <laughs> with, with Paul. But he did what the Lord told him. And again, we see the laying on the of hands and being and receiving the Holy Ghost. We see baptism immediately after Paul. Uh, gained a sight. Saul proclaims Jesus in synagogues. Acts chapter 9 verse 19. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. He didn't eat for three days, it said. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests but he the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus proving that this is very Christ 
Saul escapes from Damascus. So the guy who was persecuting him is now preaching him. And these people knew about Saul. They knew that he persecuted the Christians. And they were confused and astounded that now he was preaching Christ. Saul escapes from Damascus, Acts chapter 9, verse 23. And after that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. I'm just thinking about the word fulfilled, that many days were fulfilled. I was thinking back at Romans 11, the, the fullness of the Gentiles and stuff. After that, many days were fulfilled. So, uh, many days passed, I guess, is the sense here. The Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying await was known of Saul. And they watched the gates day and night to kill him. He knew that they wanted to kill him. And then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. He snuck out Saul in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 9 verse 26. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the, to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord and the way, and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians. But they went about to slay him. Which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. He disputed against the Grecians. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. The healing of Ananias, Acts chapter 9 verse 32, And it came to pass that Peter passed throughout all quarters, or as he passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydda, Lydda, Lydda I don't know, Acts 9.33, And there he found a certain man named Ananias, which had kept his bed eight years, and was sick of the palsy. He was bedridden for eight years. Peter said unto him, Ananias, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise, and make thy bed. And he rose immediately. He arose immediately. And all that dwelt in Lydda and Saron saw him, and turned to the Lord. Just another account of a miracle from Peter. Dorcas restored to life. Acts 9.36 Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. She was sick and she died. And for as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa, the disciples had heard that Peter was there, and sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, he sat, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. And it was known all throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon a tanner. So, another uh, miracle from Peter, but this one is bringing somebody back from the dead. Healing people, bringing them back from the dead, casting out demons, preaching the gospel, getting people converted. Lots of things going on at that time. Very interesting. And so we kind of started off with Saul and Paul, and then we kind of switched back over to Peter. But uh, good stuff in that one. So Acts chapter 9 and a little over 9 minutes, almost going on 10 minutes. So let's go on to chapter 10. God bless.